The Playbook to Fix Federal Hiring was just revealed recently, and the book outlines 12 plays. I want to go over a few of these that I think might impact you. The first one we have is strategic recruitment. Short and sweet, it is not enough to just post a job announcement on usajobs.gov anymore. There needs to be more of an outreach, social media, LinkedIn recruiter type engagement. You might see it on LinkedIn where people are trying to message you, asking if you're interested about certain positions. The government doesn't really do much of that. Now, there's an exception to this. NASA, they did a pretty decent job. They're targeting scientists and engineers on LinkedIn. Space Force has also taken a more aggressive approach when it comes to social media. In the future, there needs to be more of a courtship where you're courting the talent. You're identifying somebody with the right experience, the right skills, and you're making it easier for them to come into your organization. With job announcements, a lot of times, those are written generically or incorrectly or very vague. And it's hard to understand by reading it if you're actually eligible. You, you might think you're eligible, so you apply. This causes hundreds of people that might not be qualified to apply to a job announcement because it's not written in the correct way. There's gonna be more of an effort to ensure that the job announcement is using plain language, that people are gonna actually be able to read it and say, yes, I am qualified, no, I'm not. Maybe I should spend the time and apply for this job, or maybe I shouldn't. Some metric goals for this area include reducing the time to hire by 10% year over year. Right now, most federal agencies, they hire between four and six months. Let's say five, five months. 10% reduction, four and a half months. Completely possible. Most delays in the federal hiring process, these are avoidable. They're preventable, right? HR, if they're delaying, are they understaffed? What's the pain point in HR? Let's fix that. What about the security team? What about the hiring manager? Is the hiring manager able to focus and review the resumes he has on his desk so he can make a selection for interviews? Or is he bogged down by other activities and other functions in his role? Okay, so next we have skills-based hiring. Right now, most federal hiring is coming down to your resume and the self-assessment. Now, the resume people can embellish, people can lie about themselves, or they can pay other people to embellish about what they've done in their past. That's one problem. Next problem is the self-assessment. You know the one I'm talking about, the one everyone's marking down that they're an expert. But the problem is, not everybody is an expert, obviously. So, this extends the time to actually find a suitable candidate to interview. Because now you're not just looking at 10 people that are truly experts, you're looking at 200 people who are all claiming to be experts even though they're not. Now some agencies have decided instead of doing this, we're going to add other assessments. The ones that take you to web pages like USA Hire and you have to answer questions and actually demonstrate what your knowledge is in that area. How proficient are you at certain tasks? We have agencies already doing this, like the Department of Interior. They're claiming 74% of their job announcements, they require an additional assessment. Department of Homeland Security partnered with OPM to deliver even more assessments for many positions. So the guidance for this is for agencies to increase the number of second assessments in job announcements. The first assessment will probably still be there, the self-assessment, the one that you were marking expert on, but they could switch it up where you have to input more information aside from just a multiple choice. The second one is the one where you're going to have to go through three or four or five different assessments. They're gonna measure what is your leadership capability? What is your managerial capability? How proficient are you when it comes to financial tasks? If you're applying for a financial specialist position, how proficient are you? And you're gonna have to demonstrate that. Those results are typically good for 12 months and you never know exactly what you ranked, but you can't take it again until after those 12 months. A lot of different agencies that require that type of assessment, they can use those results. They also want to increase and track the number of selections that are made using this multi-hurdle approach. When you hear of multi-hurdle approach, the first thing that goes off in my mind is, do we even need more hurdles in the federal hiring process? Are they not enough hurdles that we have to jump over? But the argument for this is that with these additional hurdles, it should limit the applicants that are applying and that would make the hiring process go quicker. That's less work for HR to do. Next, we have integrating AI technology. Here we have OMB wanting to take AI in the human resource office and they wanna combine them. They wanna combine them to improve efficiency. Now you might know this already, but some agencies, they use computers 
to scan assessments, to scan resumes. Just because a computer does it, it does not mean a human will never look at it. A human has to be in that loop. A human resource specialist has to review the resume, has to review the job application. But what we're hearing is that AI should be more involved. Now this might be discouraging for some people because they can see it as a computer disqualifying them before they get a fair shake. And I understand that. But the argument is to identify and find the higher qualified people quicker. And AI can be used to do the repeatable task. Some agencies, they're already doing it. We have the Air Force who reported using AI to help their staffing specialist assess applicants against position requirements. And the Department of Education, they've been using virtual assistants to answer customer questions for months now. The goal here is to track and increase the number of HR AI use cases. Okay, next we have early career talent. Right now, agencies look at early career talent as short-term hires. This is because younger people don't typically want to stay in the same job for very long, very quick to pivot and look for better opportunities. A lot of those opportunities, they're in the private sector. When an individual is in the early years of their career, the private sector can be a lot more rewarding when it comes to their financial compensation and their benefits a lot of the time. So some internships that we have in the government, some of them are paid, some of them are not paid. If they're paid, they come in at GS6, GS7. So they're not making that much, maybe 40, 50, maybe $60,000 a year. We can look at NASA. NASA's already ahead of the curve. They currently have over 3,000 paid interns. 84% of them end up staying with the agency. The overall goal is to increase the number of paid internships and to convert those interns. Next, we have pooled hiring. Pooled hiring is a great thing. Let's say in the past, 200 people applied for a job. One person was selected. What happens to the other 199? Well, nothing happened. They had to go resume their job search somewhere else. Pooled hiring enables the other 199, the ones that were actually qualified, it enables them to be considered for other positions within the federal government. This involves sharing those hiring certificates with other agencies, a list of individuals that are highly qualified. The Department of Health and Human Services, they found success sharing certificates and they've made over 600 hires using it. Then we had four agencies that recently shared certificates and they hired 86 HR specialists using the same certificate. The goal here is to increase the shared certificates and track the number of hires from pooled hiring. So will these techniques be enough to improve or to fix the federal hiring process, to get people to actually want to work in the federal government and to stay there, to retain them? Well, that's yet to be seen. But if you're interested in working for the federal government, if you have questions about the federal hiring process, about usajobs.gov or different types of government jobs, I did a live stream recently, answered over a dozen questions. A lot of these questions, they could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.